Joseph had a cheat code to life. Now, if life is hard for you, I want to show you what it sort of looks like to have God on your side and have a cheat code. It's like you get the Mario Star and you can just run through all your enemies. You can just, you know, you get all that and you, all those things that are trying to kill you, you just run right through them. You just, you just run. You don't have to land on top of them. You don't have to spit them. You just run through them. How many of you like the Mario Star? You get it and you, nobody can touch you until it runs out, right? There's Mario, and life is like this. There's obstacles at your school. There's obstacles on your job. There's obstacles at home. Things that make it harder. But if you have God with you, if you have a cheat code to life, those obstacles don't stop you. You just run right through them. You just keep on going. And yes, there is a devil. Yes, there is an enemy. Yes, there's problems in life. We have a flesh. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. If you've got God with you, it's like a cheat code of life. It's like you're running through your schoolwork, you're running through your temptations, and nothing can stop you. This is what happened to Joseph. He had a cheat code of life, and the cheat code was God. Any obstacle that came, Joseph ran right through it. Any problem that came, it didn't even mess with Joseph. And this is what God wants for all of you. He wants you to conquer your temptations this week victoriously. He wants you to be a mom or a dad that has a lot of problems, but you just run through your problems because you have God with you, and it's like having a cheat code of life. Things that should not work, work. Things that should take you down, don't take you down because the Lord is with you. How did Joseph get this cheat code? How many have ever cheated at video games? Raise your hand. You ever cheated at video games? How many of your brother and sister cheat at video games and you're actually here to actually expose them? Okay. Now, there's sometimes you cheat at video games and it's against the rules. Then there's other times that it's actually cool to cheat at video games. And I want to talk about this thing called cheat code. How many have ever heard of cheat code? Have you ever heard of a cheat code? How many have ever used a cheat code? You ever typed in the cheat code? So when you when you have your controller, different controllers have different ones. And I want to talk about a cheat code that was actually a real thing that happened in the 1980s because it's called the Konami code. It was the first famous cheat code. These video game developers were helping uh, somebody to make a video game be easy to use and they found out that the video game was too hard. So a cheat code, the Konami code, created in 1986 by this man named uh, Kazuhisa Hashimoto. I hope I said that right. It's one of the earliest known cheat codes in video games. Hashimoto created the code while he was porting the 1985 arcade game called Gradius. How many old heads remember Gradius? Can you remember Gradius? All right. God bless you. I see that hand. Uh, <laughs> So the Nintendo Entertainment System was trying to make a game, and they found it was too difficult to play. They made it too hard to play. And this guy's like, nobody's gonna be able to be good at this game. Nobody's gonna win. They're gonna be bored, and they're gonna stop playing. So he invented this cheat code, and you get 30 lives when the game starts instead of just three. So the game starts, when the start screen comes on, how many of you ever entered a cheat code when that started and says press start? And you enter the, the code, and here was, this is the Konami code. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start. I memorized that as a kid. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start. Because I wanted to make sure, and you, the, the Konami code, you could actually put it into different video games and something cool would happen to you. You didn't know what it was, but you would be better at the video game. The video game would be easier. But the problem was, they said, we're going to need a cheat code because the game is too hard. 
So I want to talk about cheat code today because here's the fact. How many find school really, really hard? Raise your hand. School got hard? How many wish you had a cheat code in school? Not taking your iPhone in school and cheating. No, no. That's wrong. How many find life hard, difficult? Life can be hard. Did you know that there's a cheat code to life? Now, I want to tell you this. Life is hard. And for a lot of people, life is too hard. Life is so hard for some people, they give up. Life is so hard for some people, they just go sit down in their house and close the door and just wait until it gets easier. Life is hard. God knows that life is hard. So God has installed a cheat code into life. Did you know this? Did you know that there's a cheat code to life to make it easier? Because God knows it's hard. Let's talk about it. So there's a man named Joseph. How many of you have heard of Joseph in the Bible? Genesis 39. You don't have to turn your Bible since it's right here on the screen. I want to read what it says. Genesis 39. Here's what it says in verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt and Potiphar an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. So Joseph was thrown into a pit by his brothers and sold into slavery. This guy named Potiphar bought Joseph. He's the general of the whole Egyptian army, and Joseph is living in his house now. Look at verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph. Everybody say that together. Ready? And the Lord was with Joseph. Say that again. And the Lord was with Joseph. And the Lord was with Joseph. Watch this. And he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper. Say that together. Made all that he did to prosper. Say that again. Made all that he did to prosper. In his hand, and Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him. And he, Potiphar, made him overseer over his whole house, and all that he had he put into his hand. Now let's read down further in verse 21. It says, But the Lord was with Joseph. Now Joseph is in prison. He's been accused of trying to mess with Potiphar's wife. Potiphar throws him into prison, but the Lord was with Joseph. Say that. The Lord was with Joseph. And showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all that the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him. And the Lord made it to prosper. Everybody say that. The Lord was with him. This is a cheat code to life. Let's pray, and we'll have a few moments together and be dismissed. Father, we thank you so much that you have gathered these people together from our community and from our church and from different places. Father, I pray that you would speak to our heart. Tell us this secret that you have for us. Show us what you want. Show us what you have intended, that we might be able to tap into this. Because life is hard for a lot of people but you are here to make it easier. Lord, I pray that you will bless our time. Help me as I speak. Give me the filling of the Spirit of God and speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Joseph in the pit. He was sold. He was thrown. His brothers didn't like him because he had a coat of many colors and he was the favorite son. How many have a sibling rivalry? Don't raise your hand. But your brothers or your sisters, they get away with more. They get more perks. You feel like they're the favorite. And you wish you could do something about it, but you just can't because it's illegal. So Joseph's brothers actually threw him into a pit. And in the bottom of this pit, the Lord was with him. He was protected by God. And he was brought up out of the pit, and they sold him to a company of Ishmaelites that took him down to Egypt. So when he got to Egypt, he was in Potiphar's house. And Joseph, he rose to the ranks because the Lord was with him. And Potiphar put him over everything. He was like the steward of Potiphar's house. And everything that he did worked. Everything he did prospered. It just, he would, he would set something and it would just work. God would make it to prosper because the Lord was with Joseph. Then Joseph was accused of trying to mess with Potiphar's wife. Because Potiphar's wife was a bad lady. And she's like, Joseph's messing with me. He gets thrown into prison. And while Joseph is in prison, the Lord is still with Joseph. So I want you to see this roller coaster. He's in the pit. He's down low. And then he goes up. He's in Potiphar's house. He rises. And then he goes back down again. 
He's done it in the prison. It, that's a low place to be. But the Lord was with him. If your life is like this, like a roller coaster, it goes up and down, up and down. If God is with you, it's going to be all right. And then Joseph was in prison and he met two people, a butcher and a baker. And the butcher and the baker, they dream dreams. And they're like, listen, we dream this dream. And God helped Joseph, because the Lord was with him. He helped Joseph to interpret their dreams. And they're like, whoa, that's crazy. And then one of them gets out, and he goes, and he lives in Pharaoh's house. And Pharaoh dreams a dream, the king of all the land. He dreams a dream. And he's like, man, I dreamed a dream. I can't remember what my dream was. And the baker says, oh, I know a guy who can interpret dreams. And Pharaoh's like, who? Oh, Joseph, he's in the prison. So they bring Joseph out, and, pa and, and Pharaoh's like, hey, can you tell me my dream? And Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dream. And so now Joseph comes, and he gets to live in the palace. And while Joseph is living in the palace, there's a famine in all of the land of the whole, the whole known world. And the only place that has bread is Egypt. Because Joseph gets put in charge of everything. And God, remember, he's with Joseph. And God makes him to prosper. And so bread is in Egypt. And all the nations come. And they ask for bread from Egypt. Egypt becomes the most powerful nation in the whole world. All because of Joseph. Because the Lord was with him. Joseph had a cheat code to life. Now, if life is hard for you, I want to show you what it sort of looks like to have God on your side and have a cheat code. It's like you get the Mario star, and you can just run through all your enemies. You can just, you know, you get all that, and you, all those things that are trying to kill you, you just run right through them. You just... You just run. You don't have to land on top of them. You don't have to spit them. You just run through them. How many of you like the Mario star? You get it? And nobody can touch you until it runs out, right? This Mario, and life is like this. There's obstacles at your school. There's obstacles on your job. There's obstacles at home. Things that make it harder. But if you have God with you, if you have a cheat code to life, those obstacles don't stop you. You just run right through them. You just keep on going. And yes, there is a devil. Yes, there is an enemy. Yes, there's problems in life. We have a flesh. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. If you've got God with you, it's like a cheat code of life. It's like you're running through your schoolwork. You're running through your temptations. And nothing can stop you. This is what happened to Joseph. He had a cheat code of life. And the cheat code was God. Get everybody give uh, Mario a big hand there for That's exactly what Joseph had. Any obstacle that came, Joseph ran right through it. Any problem that came, it didn't even mess with Joseph. And this is what God wants for all of you. He wants you to do third grade victoriously. He wants you to conquer your temptations this week victoriously. He wants you to be a mom or a dad that has a lot of problems, but you just run through your problems because you have God with you, and it's like having a cheat code of life. Things that should not work, work. Things that should take you down, don't take you down because the Lord is with you. Really fast, and our time will be done. Having God in your life when the Lord is with you is like a cheat code on life. That's, it. That's just a, a fact. How did Joseph get this cheat code? Really fast and our time will be done. Number one, he had a relationship with God. If you don't have a relationship with God, if God is not in your life, then the Lord can't be with you through all your storms, through all your problems, through all your trials. But if you meet God, if you have God in your life, God will be with you the same way he was with Joseph. He had a relationship with God. Number two, Joseph had a divine, see if you can guess this, he had a divine, starts with a D, dream. He had a divine dream. Remember God gave Joseph a dream when he was a boy. And he saw, he saw the sun, the moon, and the stars. And the stars and the moon would bow, or the stars would bow down to this one central one. It was supposed to be Joseph. And here was the interpretation that God told him. He was like, one day, everybody's going to bow down to you, including your brothers and your mom and dad. Joseph told his brothers, hey, God gave me a dream that you're going to bow down to me one day. And they did not like that. <laughs> so they didn't like Joseph already. But Joseph had a divine dream. If God 
is in your life, if you have a relationship with God in your life and you walk with him, he's going to give you a dream. He's going to give you a purpose in your life. He's going to say, this is what I want you to do. This is why I created you. If you stay close to God and you want to find that out, he will reveal that to you. And that dream will drive you forward in your life. It will be the thing, your North Star, that you've got your eyes on because you've got your eyes on God. And nothing can pull you to the left or the right. This girl, that boy, that temptation, that thing that you could get into. If you have a divine dream from God, that's like having a cheat code in life that keeps you on the straight and narrow. Look at what else he had. Joseph had intentional integrity. When he was in Potiphar's house, he could have stolen anything, and he didn't. And even Potiphar's wife came and said, hey, let's go uh, commit adultery together. And Joseph said, no, no, no. And here's what he said. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? He had a chance to give in to a temptation, but he said, I can't do that because that would be great wickedness and sin against God. And keep in mind, Joseph was by himself. His mom was not there. His dad was not there. His teachers was not there. His pastor was not there. Joseph was by himself, and he could have gotten away with it if he wanted to. Nobody would have caught him. But he had intentional integrity. When he had a chance, when he was by himself to do whatever he wanted to do, he decided to do right, and the Lord was with Joseph. And then number four, and we're done. Why did Joseph have a cheat code on life? Why was the Lord with him? He had habitual humility. He was humble all the time. He made it a habit to be humble. Joseph was humble when he was in the prison and Pharaoh said, hey, I've got a, a dream. And I heard that you're like the dream catcher. You're the dream guy. You're the dream guru. You're like the genius. I heard that you don't even need to hear my dream. You can tell me what my dream was and tell me the interpretation of the dream. And Pharaoh's like, this, this baker, he told me you, you're like the man. And Joseph said, he said these words, it is not in me. It is not in me. I'm not the dude that you're looking for. I'm not him. God will give me the answer that you need. Joseph had humility. When he could have said, oh, this is my chance to get out of prison. Oh, Pharaoh, yeah, you, you're looking at him. He said, no, 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 not me. He deflected the glory to God. And I want to tell you this. There are some of you who are brilliant mathematicians in here. There are some of you guys that you are smart. Uh, you are athletic. You're going to be better than other people at sports. You might be more handsome, more pretty, stronger, taller, whatever. Do not ever think that it's you. That was God that made you that way. That's God that gave you that gift. Always deflect glory to God. Don't ever beat on your chest and say it's me. Don't ever pull the spotlight that only belongs to God to yourself. Joseph had a chance to glow and he was humble and he rose. Here's what God says. God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. If you lift yourself up, God can push you back down. But if you lower yourself, God will say, look at that person who's lowering. Look at that person who's humbling. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Yes. Well, I'm humbling myself. God, he exalt me now. No, no, in due time. In due time. Sometimes you got to wait. Sometimes you got to go up the stairs. But if you humble yourself, God will lift you up. And I can tell you this. If you have a relationship with God, if you have a divine dream from God because of that relationship, if you have intentional integrity, when you're in public, you do right. When you're in private, you do right. When you're in public, you follow God. When you're in private, you follow God. Intentional integrity. By the way, that's not easy. There's going to be a lot of friends that say, hey, let's come do something on our phone. Let me show you this video. Let's go do this. And you've got to say like Joseph, I can't do this sin against God because God is watching. And he's the one. God's the one that gives us a cheat code in life. It's not what money you have or your, your uh, opportunities. It's almighty God. If you do right by God, God will bless your life. And Joseph was habitually humble. He was humble. Be a person of humility. Be a person who's lowering yourself. Be a person who esteems other people better than you. And God will pick you out of the crowd. He said, well, how am I going to stand up? God sees you. God will always see you. And he will find you. He found Joseph way down there in the prison. Joseph was in prison for a long time. And God said, let me find you this young man. And he brought Joseph out. Without Joseph, the whole nation of Egypt would not have survived the famine. But Joseph had a cheat code on life. How many want a cheat code on life? You want things, when you do it, you want it to prosper. When you do it, you want it to work. And there's some times that you're like, how does it even work? God can make it work. God can make a way out of no way. God is a miracle worker. When it shouldn't work, God can make it work. But you have to have God in your life. 
You have to have a divine dream. You have to have a purpose from God and go after that. You have to have intentional integrity and you have to have humility. And if you do, you'll be like Joseph. You can have God's hand with you. When you're on the roller coaster, like when you're up high, God's hand's with you. When you go down low and it's even a hard time, you might have had that low time this week, God's hand can be with you. When you're in the pit, when you're in Potiphar's house, when you're in the prison, or when you're in the palace, wherever you go, if you, if I just, I want this for my life. I just want God's hand to be on my life. If I do something, I want God to make it prosper, not for me, but for God's glory. And I want that for all of you. I want that for your moms and your dads. I want that for your families. I want that for your grandchildren. The legacy that just passed on, a baton can fall, but God can pick it up and redeem that if we walk with God. And it's all about having God in our life. It's about a nice close. Let's just really quickly, I want to pray together. And then we'll have some instructions as we dismiss. Father, I pray that you would speak to our hearts today. We thank you for the fun that we have with our young people today. Thank you for these young people that are the future of Frisco, the future of North Texas, the future of our world. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor David, of all the things that Joseph had that made things work, that he had God's hand with him and he just had a cheat code in life, of all those things, the one that, the one that I think I need the most is I want to have a relationship with God. I want to know God. You may be in here and you say, Pastor David, I know I have a relationship with God. There's been a time that I met God, that God actually forgave my sins. He became my Savior because I asked him to save me. I asked him to forgive my sins. And because of what Jesus did on the cross, I know I'm going to heaven. And I praise God for that. This is not anything I've done to earn that. That's all God. And if that's you, and you say, Pastor David, that's me. I'm, I'm a believer. I'm going to heaven. And no, nobody looking around, heads about, eyes closed, don't embarrass anybody. But if you, that's me, I have a relationship with God, and I praise God, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. Would you just slip your hand up as a testimony? I, I know I'm going to heaven. Amen. Several hands. I know I'm going to have a relationship with God. You can put your hands down. You might hear, be here, and this might be the first time in your life you've ever heard of something like a relationship with God. Or having your sins forgiven, washed away, having a home in heaven for all of eternity. And you say, Pastor David, I, I, I don't know much about that. I've never really explored that. I haven't thought much about that. And at best, I really don't know for sure. I don't know for sure if I'm going to heaven. But with heads bowed and eyes closed, we won't embarrass anyone at all. You say, Pastor David, pray for me. I don't have a relationship with God. But I want a relationship with God. I want to know that I'm secure in heaven when this life is over. I don't know that for sure. I've never, I've never accepted Jesus, but I'd like to know more about that. Anybody like that? Slip up your hand. I, I would like to have a relationship with God. I'd like to know more about that. And nobody looking around won't embarrass anyone, anyone at all. I don't have a relationship with God, but I sure would like that. Anyone? I see one hand. Amen. Is there anybody else? I don't have a relationship with God, but I would like to. All right, why don't we just do this? Heads bowed and eyes closed. Let's pray together. If you have never accepted Jesus, but you would like to do it now, it's not anything that we do to earn our way to heaven. It's receiving the free gift of salvation. And you can pray with me if you would like to. Inside of your heart, you can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and that I do bad things. I know that I don't deserve to be in heaven forever. But the Bible says that you came and you died for me. And you laid down your life for me. So that my sins could be forgiven. And as best I know how right now, Lord, I want to ask you to forgive me of my sins. I want to receive what you did on the cross for me. I want to ask you to be my Savior and take me to heaven when I die. Thank you for dying on the cross for me, Jesus. I'm putting my faith in you. Heads bowed and eyes closed, nobody looking around. And you say, Pastor David, I've never prayed that before, but I just prayed that prayer. I believe God just saved me. I believed in Jesus. I believe God just saved me. Would you slip your hand up? Anybody like that? I see one hand. Anybody else? Two hands. Three I, I just believed on Jesus. I believe God just saved me. Four or five hands. Amen. Anybody else? I just prayed that prayer. I believe God just saved me. 
Amen. You can put your hands down. Father, life really is hard. We need your help. We need your grace. Lord, for a person who is near the edge of life and about to fall, they need your grace.